Oh, hello. Welcome to the third battle report on my channel, and this time it was my novitiates versus my good friends Pathfinders. So these are the Pathfinders from the Chalmath box, the bespoke uh, Tau Kill team. And they're really well painted. Oh, he hasn't been ruining his bases, but I did give him the two victory points painted. Not that it decided the game in the end, actually. But uh, yeah, really admire the models. And mine are no more painted than the last one, because this has only been the next day. So, I'm trying a new format with the battle report. So this is turn one, and at the start, uh, on the left hand side, you can see how things were right at the start of turn one, so you can see how everybody deployed. And on the right hand side of your screen, you can see how things ended at the end of turn one, so that you can refer back to them. Um, hopefully this will make things a bit easier to follow, or I hope so. So, starting uh, off with the, the mission and things like that, we were playing Master the Terminals. We determined the order that the terminals were going to go down. Um, you can see the numbers on the screen there. Terminal number three is just under the under the building here. Okay. Um, we rolled off for attacker and defender. The Tau player won, so chose to attack. I was defending, put my models down first, deployed them in kind of three even groups, with the idea being I was trying to get onto objectives uh, one, two, and three. Even though I knew that objective one wouldn't be scorable in the first turn, I was hoping to get my uh, Pronatus onto the, the objective one because even though I couldn't score it, um, I would be able to get extra faith points for standing on an objective marker because the objective marker is still there. Uh, I knew that the objective number two wasn't going to be scorable next turn, but I was hoping um, to be able to score it in turn three. And had a plan to get to objective marker three, the one that's obscured, uh, by boosting my movement and moving with my uh, Repentia. However, uh, it didn't all go according to plan, as you are about to see, because the Tau had some ideas of their own. So, first, uh, really simple things from my point of view. Um, and again, I'm going to go slightly out of order, but I'm going to try and explain the sort of the key moments and the key plays. The first thing that happened that I thought was really cool and worthy of mention, um, I dashed with my um, crossbow lady, so she did a little dash. And then on the first turn, I um, the Tau moved, I had their drone deployed here, and they moved somebody up. Um, but the first turn that I had, I was able to use my uh, Dialogus to give uh, the crossbow lady an extra action point. So then, and then the Dialogus moved up to just behind this barricade here. Uh, then the crossbow on her next activation was able to, from her position here, do uh, another move up to the top here and a dash and actually position on top of the walkway. I didn't quite have the range to get into um, the cover, but I was still up there on the top of the walkway, and I was able to take out one of the uh, Tau, I think it was a sniper. Just trying to find him on the map. I think it was this fella here that I managed to take out, uh, and he was the one with a bionic arm and a, a silent weapon. So it took out before you managed to do anything. So having positioned my sniper with a couple of uh, pretty clever plays, I was feeling pretty pleased with myself. But the gun drone has all sorts of shenanigans. So the gun drone was able to operate, shoot at my um, shoot at my crossbow lady up here, and that's why you see over in the second picture that she was not down to three wounds. I used my whip to buff the Repentia. And then move my whip up here into cover. Um, and then the Repentia was getting ready to charge. Not charge, but to move three. Plus the extra move um, that she got from being whipped. So a distance of four circle and a dash to the objective. And then use her extra action point to activate that objective. However, um, she was shot and killed pretty effectively by the Tau, I think by... The, one of the uh, s uh, snipers up here. Okay. So I'd lost that miniature. Um, my 
other than that, pretty straightforward. My uh, Relic Seeker moved up to here. And my leader moved up to follow her. Um, the miniature here, this one, moved up this way. That's why you can see her in this third position here. And then these three basically just moved over here and didn't do very much. Um, my Relic Seeker soaked a lot of fire, kept trying to take down my Relic Seeker with various things, burnt through very, uh, quite a lot of faith points to keep her alive on that point, managed to generate my extra faith points. But at the end of that first turn, I had scored zero um, victory points because this objective one uh, here was worth nothing. Uh, he'd thwarted my attempts to get the um, Eviscerator up onto objective three. And there was no way that I was going to be able to get anything onto objective two because I just didn't, simply didn't have anything else to boost, boost movement. Whereas he managed to, as you can see from the right hand picture, get his leader onto objective four and claim a point there. He managed to get a lot of marker lights on me and got a point there. And he also had the complicated pathfinder one, which is having like half of his things on conceal and having more victory points than me. And I think something else I managed to get a point there. So a big victory point lead for the Tau in turn one. I was pretty pleased with my shenanigans with the, um, the crossbow that I was able to get a kill early in the turn, but I he also managed to get a turn one kill. He killed my chainsword, which was disappointing. Moving on to turn two, and hopefully you're following this. So it's the same picture that was on the right hand side of the previous slide, just now here on the left hand side. Um, and then over on the right, you can see how things looked at the end of the turn. So Again, I'm possibly going to go out of order. The big thing that happened here was I um, used the ploy that gets rid of the minimum range on my pistols and shot a plasma gun shot into this Pathfinder drone, killing it, but not before it had shot and done uh, some damage to uh, my um, duelist down here. Right. But that was the big uh, sort of play there. But then my leader was killed uh, in return because she'd exposed herself. She was on a, a uh, attack order and managed to get killed in return by the, the sniper up here. Um, these guys climbed up onto the box um, and I shot auto pistols at the sniper for a little bit of damage. My crossbow took a lot of fire and there was a lot of shenanigans with faith points and putting wounds back on the town moved round onto the boxes here into a more commanding position and this little gun drone actually jumped up onto here and that was really what laid a lot of fire onto my uh, sniper because he was able to flank the town leader captured the objective and to hide around, hide around this corner so that he couldn't be shot by the sniper and the Banner here moved into the middle because I had central control and the whippy exactor, that's the one, moved on to the objective there. He did eventually manage to kill my Pronatus as well with a lot of fire, so I was forced to move back my Diologus to reclaim this point. Um, and so at the end of turn two, I had claimed more points. So I'd got a point for being in the middle. I'd got um, a point for having an operative killed on an objective because I had the martyrdom um, secondary. I hadn't scored any points for my third secondary, which was to get guys onto my nominated objective, which I'd nominated this objective under here, which was very upsetting. Um, and then from the primary, I'd scored the one down here in my deployment zone and the one up here, turn three, because my whip, it's a bad picture, but my whip was down here under there. Meanwhile, the Tau, I think, again, scored Mark Life. I find the new ploys that they have, because it's the first time playing against them, I find it a little bit hard to follow. He scored a second thing from the He's a really nice guy and a really honest player, and I'm sure he played everything absolutely perfectly. Uh, I'm just making a slightly terrible battle report because I don't remember exactly how it works. But he managed to get his marker lights out uh, and score an easy second point there. And uh, he's got a point here for being on the objective here. 
Um, so that's really good. I don't think... I'm trying to remember what his third... I'm trying to remember what his third ploy was. Because he had the Markalite thing, the other specialty Tau one, and something else. Wow. That's that's amazing. I can't remember what the third uh, his third spec up was. I'm sure it was something that he was scoring now and again. It certainly wasn't... Ah, Vantage. It was Vantage Point. Yeah. So he was getting his guys onto his Vantage and being able to score that way as well. A lot of kind of little fiddly things that I find it very difficult to deny because they're all very technical, right? Okay, moving on to turn three. And it's uh, much of a muchness. So my... Um, Banner in the middle here, basically just camp down for the entire turn, because what else could I possibly do? Um, my sniper was flanked by the gun drone, came round and killed me there. I had a fun charge here with my um, mace, the mace wielding one, who did the jump, didn't roll a one, uh, charged and wiped out the sniper here. My duelist and my Hospitaller, who is under here somewhere that you can't quite see, both moved towards this point too to be able to secure that. And um, she scored this point here uh, and then tried to move off but was killed. Meanwhile, the Tau are moving up and consolidating their position. I didn't really manage to kill anyone. Really, this was my downfall. I was playing the objective game. I was trying to secure my objectives. I really wasn't killing enough Tau. He's brought up the second gun drone at this point. His grenadier is coming down here and is causing all kinds of havoc. Unfortunately, you can't quite see from the photograph, but lobbing fusion grenades, killing my whippy lady that's down the bottom here. Uh, he's got his fire base at the back here that are just plinking off shots here, there, and everywhere, keeping me ducking and spending faith points. And the re only reason I'm not taking huge piles of damage is because of all the faith points that I'm continually spending to try and keep myself alive, which really is the only uh, way that the, the novitiates have a chance of winning any games. Into turn four. Um, so now I've really got a little bit of a mountain to climb. I've only got three figures um, left going into turn four here. And really, it was really difficult for me to see how I could win. So... My first plan here was to, um, first of all, I was going to try and get a shot, okay? So I thought about where where could I where could I try and shoot, what could I try and do? But unfortunately, he got the first turn, and this gun drone was able to both um, plink, try to plink some wounds off here. I avoided that again with faith shenanigans, but then the really horrible thing was it jumped down with fly. And capture this back objective. And my first plan had to be. Because now I'd scored both points from hold the middle. So I was trying to pull this one back. Um, to score that objective. But I couldn't. That option was taken away from me. So I'm looking around for things to do. And as mentioned his grenade fella. You can't see. But I'll, I'll draw him on for you. His grenade fella's down here. So I'm going to decide to charge the grenade fella. Maybe I'm going to kill him. And actually I did. I rolled really well. Killed that towel, and so for a moment there, I was holding the objective. Now, I didn't have the points to um, the action points to actually claim the objective that's under there and to score any victory points. But what was relevant was because that was the one that I had indicated for my novitiate's um, custom uh, objective, the sanctify objective one. It hadn't scored any of the points from that, but if I held it at the end of the turn, it would have been worth two victory points. Unfortunately, my opponent was just able to bring in so many Tau that I hadn't been sort of wrapping up and killing. Um, not just the ones you can see, but there were more kind of lurking under here in various places. And this drone here came down um, and it just, he didn't even have to kill me off the objective. He did ultimately, eventually, but just with the weight of bodies, I think he ran a sniper in from somewhere. Again, really sorry, I should have tried to get some more photos, but a lot of action is taking place under this big terrain piece right but ultimately capturing that objective was not to be he brought his leader in to try and shoot me as well once i'd moved up here to capture this objective he uh, ultimately did kill me although he didn't need to 
but I did go for a cheeky charge just for fun. I actually charged my duelist in and killed the Tau leader, and that's what she's doing over here, not scoring any points. And then this uh, model, I jumped down onto this objective to try and score the points here. So at the end of that round, I'd managed to score another, uh, another point there. I'd maxed out central control earlier, so I had two points from central control. I'd maxed out the one for having sisters get killed on objectives, four points. I'd got none from Sanctify, and I'd scored another uh, seven, no, another five over the course of the game from the primary, put me on a total of nine. Uh, my opponent, though, was able to score his secondaries again, so he'd maxed out effectively maxed out all his secondaries he maxed out vantage he maxed out um the marker lights one and he in the last turn managed to max out the really complicated pathfinders one for having half his team on um conceal and getting more victory points than me in the turn which is why you see he's gone back to conceal here and he's gone back to conceal here um so yeah he ended up winning he had his six points from his secondaries and then i think he managed to get um only four from the maybe five from the primary through the course of the game which put him on i think 10 just one ahead of me and then if we add on the fact that he's fully painted and mine weren't that would be a 12 i think he might have been on 13 so i think the final score was something like uh 13 to tau and nine to the uh, novitiates but I had a very fun game and it was really very enjoyable much more enjoyable than my previous game against the harlequins even though i did get beaten quite bad i think it's a a really fun matchup when you and your opponent are trying to do different things so he was primarily a shooting team and i was primarily a uh, a combat team and so we had that kind of interplay that was made it quite tactical and quite interesting i think with the Harlequins, where you're playing two combat teams smashing into each other, you're kind of just smashing into each other, and then the person with the better stats is going to win. And so it's really difficult then for the weaker started models, i.e. the Novitiates, to play around that. Whereas this felt more balanced. If I could get him into combat, I could kill him, but if he could keep me at range, he could shoot me. Their shenanigans with their drones that I've really undersold in the video because I have a terrible memory, but the, the whole business with the drone controller where you can activate a drone and then activate another drone and just get loads of extra shots and get loads of extra overwatch shots is really quite powerful. I think the Pathfinders really are, as a lot of other people on YouTube have identified, they're, they're going to shape up to be a team to beat just with the amount of shooting that they can bear. The only other thing I'm mindful of, we were playing on a very kind of cluttered, more narrative board with a lot of um, a lot of... I think that Mechanicus terrain with the heavy terrain in the legs is kind of difficult to play around. It's not so much I think the board had too much terrain on it, but it's just that the type of terrain, uh, that Mechanicum terrain, makes the game a bit more difficult to play. And so I'm really coming around to the idea of wanting to play with simpler terrain, not less terrain, but simpler terrain, more in the vein of what you get in the Chalnath or the Octarius boxes, where generally speaking, you're dealing with walls that are the most L-shaped, you know, but generally the piece of heavy cover that are quite thin if you look at all of the um all of the terrain that uh, they're actually brought out with kill team it's all quite thin pieces of heavy cover thin pieces of really obvious light cover and uh, some platforms so it'll be interesting once i get around to building and painting the terrain to swap it around um i always feel like these battle reports are the worst things that i do in terms of content on the channel and yet consistently they get loads and loads of views people say they like them and they comment on them so obviously people are enjoying watching them let me know what you think of the subtle format change with having the before and after for each turn i think it's a bit easier to follow but i'm aware the only way to really improve them will be to almost record the entire game and then to watch it back with uh you know with a view to making the powerpoint afterwards or to try and put a video up and then narrate over the video or something like that and as i've discussed before I just I want to document my games, hope other people find them interesting, hope people like following my progress, but I don't want it to turn into um, a kind of main hobby of mine is, 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 is making these battle reports because a lot of YouTube content I find pretty easy to do, but the amount of production value you'd have to get to, to put in to leap from where they are now to being really, really good would just be a lot of hours of work, whereas this is something where I can take, you know, uh, five pictures, Stick them on a PowerPoint, narrate for 20 minutes, and it's done, and people seem to get something out of it. But if you've got any um, thoughts in that regard, please do, please do um, 
drop me a, a comment. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like so that I know what's going on. Um, if you want to see more of my videos, then please do subscribe. I will try and have a video up every day. I can't. They're not all going to be battle reports. In general, they're going to be one battle report a week. This was a strange week. I managed to get two games in, so two battle reports. Um, I'm going to do more of everything else that you've seen on the channel. So more hobby showcases, more rundowns of tactics. I'm going to do some basics videos about the beginner's guides to various aspects of Kill Team as well. So I hope you're looking forward to it, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.